Research is often portrayed as a systematic inquiry-driven investigation, but in our experience of practice-based design research, we find that we reinvent, adjust, and reconfigure, well, just about everything we do in our work, from methods and outputs to the very topics that we address. This mismatch between normative assumptions about research and actual experiences in practice-based projects seems to lead to attention when pursuing and reporting practice-based design research. So in this paper, we discuss emergence and talk about ways that we might more fully frame and respond to it in our research reports and evaluations. Our fundamental message is that as a community, we should more openly embrace emergence as an integral part of practice-based design research, both to take advantage of and more accurately represent designers' work. To get an idea of what we mean by emergence, it is useful to contrast it with other approaches to research. So for instance, there's a growing pre-registration revolution within the quantitative sciences in which researchers are encouraged to record their hypotheses, methods, and analytical plans on secure websites before starting their studies. This allows reviewers and editors to check to see whether they actually did what they said they would. There are some statistical reasons for doing this, but the, reason, the result is to create a form of research that, is, that we call intention bound. That is, um, researchers' original intentions guide the entire study with little or no room for deviation. In contrast, emergence-friendly approach, uh, approaches are responsive to all sorts of external influences, new ideas and insights, unexpected findings and so forth, with the result that methods, understanding, outputs, and even topics are continually left in play throughout the course of the research. Now, research projects always involve a combination of intention-bound and emergence-friendly approaches, but some approaches are more open to emergence than others. For instance, some areas of sociology, STS, and feminist technocides depict emergence as integral to research. And although most accounts portray the physical sciences as thoroughly intention bound, the Nobel Prize winning biologist Francois Jacob describes day science, the sort of science that we normally encounter with reasoning that snaps together like gears, as underpinned by night science, the times when scientists struggle to understand phenomena, formulate hypotheses, and devise analyses, a process that appears entirely emergent in nature. Now, according to Jacob, night science doesn't appear in scientific reports because it's necessary to purify the research of all affective or irrational dross um, to, in order to convince other researchers. In other words, to formalize accounts um, in a way that we think resonates with the way practice-based re design research tends to be reported. Night science can be written out of scientific research reports because the day science remains. The controlled experiments, statistical tests, and so forth that make up the science that we know. But for other fields, the distinction between day and night science may not be so clear, and in fact, it may be that most insights and understandings emerge from their night science, and then any day science in these fields is essentially post hoc rationalization. This begs the question, though, of whether emergence is in fact integral to design research. Now, there's lots of evidence to suggest that it is. For instance, most accounts of design practice portray it as divergent, unpredictable, and emergent. For example, our co-author, co Peter Crow and his colleagues studied 10 influential practice-based design PhD theses and showed various distinct ways in which they balance intentionality and emergence in their research. In addition, many practice-based design methods also encourage emergence from ethnographic studies and cultural probes to design fictions and improvisational drama. And as HCI designers, um, draw on the sociological STS and feminist traditions that we described earlier, they also bring with them an openness to emergence. Moreover, practice-based design researchers are not accountable to their original design briefs in the way that commercial designers are. 
where commercial designers usually have to clearly respond to briefs set by their clients, design researchers are not strictly accountable to the briefs that frame their work, which they usually write themselves in the form of research proposals. And this freedom from accountability, again, allows their work to be emergent. So for all these reasons, it's kind of natural to think that emergence is integral to practice-based design research. However, there are a number of factors that may inhibit emergence in design research as well. For instance, how open design researchers are to emergence may depend on how we understand what it means to take design, turn design practice into design research. We outline two basic approaches to this. The first says that many forms of design practice can be understood as research if it is appropriately articulated to bring it into conversation with other research. The second, though, says that for design practice to be design research, it needs to take on aspects of more traditional scientific processes, such as predetermined questions, hypotheses, methods, and so forth. The choice of which approach is accepted, and of course there are others, will determine whether emergence is welcomed or whether it is inhibited to produce a more intention-bound version of design research. Another reason why emergence may be inhibited has to do with design's neighbors in the technical community. Insofar as design research produces fully functioning research products, it becomes necessary to talk to the more technical side of our community, which traditionally reports its work as a kind of day science that J Jacob talks about. Perhaps because of these inhibiting factors, it seems rare to see emergent aspects of design fully acknowledged or highlighted in reports of practice-based design research. This tendency to present practice-based research as intention-bound is a shame because negotiating emergence is one of the core skills of design practitioners, and we don't think that this should be constrained when design is pursued as a form of research. So we offer a number of strategies to help practice-based researchers think about how to more fully embrace emergence within their work. I don't have time to describe the strategies uh, here thoroughly, but I can give a taste of them here. We discuss four different aspects of engaging with emergence. The first uh, group of strategies talks about how to encourage emergence in the process of design, for instance, by embracing anomalous data or unusual settings as inspirations, or allowing technical affordances to suggest new directions rather than thinking of them as technical difficulties. The second set of strategies talk about how to manage emergence. For instance, we suggest understanding emerging findings in terms of encompassing research programs rather than as deviations from the initial goals of research projects. And we also outline a series of frameworks for understanding the contributions that emerging directions might make within projects and programs. The third set of strategies explores how we might better narrate emergence in our reports. So we borrow from Mark Blythe to suggest that design research should be considered a journey, an exploration of unknown territory, rather than as a quest for predefined goals. We also advocate seeking inspiration from very different literary genres for reporting our work, from travel writing to fiction, as alternatives to the kind of linear scientific style reports that um, commonly seems uh, most common. And the fourth set of strategies suggests how we might better assess emerging research. For instance, we advocate taking the starting points of research, the initial questions and hypotheses and so forth, as entirely provisional and open to change. We suggest that we should give more weight to assessing outputs in their own terms, to de-emphasize systematic methodologies and conversely to validate emergent ones. And finally, we advocate valuing agility and responsiveness in research, not just the ability to stick to a predefined research plan. Overall, this paper makes a very simple point. We believe that emergence is integral to design practice and that it should be embraced within practice-based design research, not inhibited or hidden. And we suggest a number of strategies for how we might frame, manage, and evaluate emergence better in our research, not just for their own sake, but to help open a discussion within the field. This has just been a really quick overview of the paper, though, so we invite you to read it for more detail. Thank you.